Welcome to another episode of Social Network. My name is Amanda Mkize. Every week we feature the latest CSI news, game changes, organizations and people who are changing lives. We bring you the latest CSI news in South Africa. Let's go straight into this week's headlines. Iveco SA and Road Freight Association announces hashtag thank you tracker winner. Jungle unites South Africans in performing one million little acts of heart. Schools around the country are urged to participate in a life-saving initiative. Let's get into the top stories. An initiative of Iveco SA and Road Freight Association, hashtag thank you tracker recognizes, celebrates and rewards the most extraordinary freight driver. A remarkable individual who goes above and beyond the call of duty. The driver is helpful, trustworthy, dependable, caring and passionate about his or her career in trucking. The 2022 winner is Nimrod Masego, a truck driver at Mapanga Logistics in Bumalang, who has taken top honors. Masego, who is one of the oldest truck drivers, has encountered many challenges in his life. Despite being illiterate, Nimrod always strives to fulfill daily compliance requirements such as completing his daily trip sheets and pre-inspection sheets and all related paperwork without fail. Regarding safety standard operating procedures, he always obeys all the rules and regulations. He never fails to report defects on the track which may cause road accidents. Jagno has announced its latest initiative called Little Acts of Heart. It is calling all South Africans to help others in any way they can, no matter how big or small. The consumer brand wants to capture these moments to encourage South Africans to share their experiences in a bid to record one million selfless acts of heart. Jagno has committed to matching these contributions by donating food hampers to the value of one million rand to those in need. The organization encourages all South Africans to be a part of this initiative. A live heart o meter will track and record Hearties, the campaign's mascot. South Africans will be able to follow Hearties' progress and know how close they are to reaching their collective goal. To kick off the initiative, Jungle Oats worked with three local street artists to elevate urban street walls in South Africa, essentially bringing campaigns message to all South Africans. Murals were created in Johannesburg, Cape Town and Durban, with the hope of inspiring communities surrounding these areas to come together. To participate in this campaign, individuals would need to post using the hashtag LittleActsOfHeart. Primary school children across South Africa are encouraged to become potential lifesavers by participating in an award-winning educational campaign. The Heart and Stroke Foundation South Africa is urging all parents and educators to register learners to participate in the fun-free interactive Fast Heroes program. The award-winning educational initiative actively uses illustrations showing grandparents as superheroes who help to identify the most common symptoms of stroke. Considering that a large number of children spend their time with their grandparents who in some instances are their primary caregivers and are most at risk. The Fast Heroes campaign teaches children to recognize the three most common stroke symptoms which are a face that suddenly droops to one side, an arm that suddenly becomes weak, and speech that is slurred or broken. Learners who participate in the program, which consists of five lessons, undergo weekly simulation and repetition to learn the essential life skills of staying calm and knowing how to call an ambulance immediately by dialing 112 on their mobile device. For more information on these stories, visit www.socialtv.co.za. Sam Marshall caught up with Gretchen Wilson Prangley, founder of Play Africa. The organization's main function is to bridge the educational divide that exists within inclusive, equitable learning spaces. Gretchen, thank you very much for your time. Thanks for joining me on our social newscast to talk about uh, Play Africa's new initiative 
uh, called STEM Seeds. And it will be interesting to see, as we unpack this conversation, what these resources really going to mean uh, for uh, learners between grade three and six. Maybe the best way to start this conversation is to put us in the know with, just talk a little bit about your organization and the work that you do. Mm -hmm. Sure, um, so Play Africa, I'm just gonna, sorry for the mic, there we go. So Play Africa is a children's museum based at Constitution Hill in central Johannesburg, but we're active in every province in South Africa. And we're really passionate about playful learning and high quality early education that sets children up for a lifetime of success. We're also really excited about bringing in educators and parents to be participants with young children to support playful learning at home. And we do this because we know that playful learning is so critical to children's lifelong learning. Play is how children learn and research shows us again and again that it's through play and discovery and exploration, interrogation, investigation through play that children develop the skills they need for the world all around them and the changing world. So when we have worked with hundreds upon hundreds of ECD centers across this country, one of the things that we found is that a lot of educators know that things like science, technology, engineering, and maths are careers that are uh, growing in the future and that skills uh, in science, technology, engineering, and maths can be helpful for later um, professional success. At the same time, we also know that many ECD practitioners do know about climate change, but are really at a loss of how to introduce both STEM skills, these science, technology, engineering, and math skills, and climate change awareness, and how do they bring those into a classroom of young children ages three to six? Um, many of the educators that we speak to themselves didn't feel like they had a very strong grounding in science or maths. They might not know a lot about technology or engineering. And so what we wanted to do is say, you know, these concepts that you're talking about are actually not as scary and intimidating as you might think, and that you mm -hmm. already have the skills and the resources in your classroom to bring these to educators. Uh, a little children. bit earlier in the intro, I was children. sure. Uh, a little bit in the intro, I was talking about grades three to six, but I'm happy that you corrected me. In actual fact, it's uh, from ages three to six. When you get to young children that early though, and, and I know one of the big uh, proponents of this program is to really try and level the playing field for young girls who will eventually turn into teenagers and become women. When you reach them that early, does the data, does the re research show that the impact is so much more meaningful. Absolutely, and I'd love to um, come back to you offline with some of the statistics that we have to demonstrate just how much these kinds of initiatives can make a difference in the lives of young children, especially girl children. One of the things that we have found again and again from our own work at Play Africa is that many children are really unfamiliar with the sciences and science careers. Uh, many children do not know that girls can become scientists, can become mathematicians. So part of the work that we're doing is working with ECD practitioners who tend to be mostly women and helping them think about how do they make sure that they themselves don't reinforce stereotypes in the classroom that might perpetuate notions of who is, is and is not included in these careers in the future. We've done some research and we're in the middle of some research with Stellenbosch University in an initiative, in, an, in a test to see how grade three children, which is a little bit older, grade three children see scientists and what scientists do. And one of the big surprises is that this methodology that we're using is called draw a scientist. So we simply ask grade three learners to draw a picture of a scientist doing science. We expected that we'd see a lot of stereotypes about a man, maybe wearing a white lab coat, some test tubes and some explosions of some kind, a mad scientist, maybe some crazy hair. What we really was surprised by, especially in running this research with Stellenbosch University in, in Soweto and other places, is that many children didn't even have that stereotype to draw on when they thought about scientists and science. Um, that we, we realized that when we asked children to name science, different, different science professions, sometimes we would get the, the profession of a doctor, but very often that was the very, the single profession in science that was named. 
So we just think that there is a massive opportunity gap here. We have the potential sitting in these incredible bright minds who don't have the pathways to these careers. How can we play a part in these early years of ages three to six to set them up for school and to set them up with the confidence and the creativity and collaboration that's required to enter uh, a science field? And your launch comes at such an interesting time. We've just had the matric results uh, in South Africa. It's been the highest it's ever been. There's a lot of uh, pats on the back flying around. But the reality is that South Africa still statistically uh, performs the worst when it comes to maths. Uh, Just talk to me about just kind of, I know it's a free resource, But just because something is free doesn't mean people will download and interact with it. So I'm sure, and it sounds to me that there's been a lot of thinking in the kitchen about how do we make sure that those that should be empowered to teach are empowered to teach? How do we make sure that happens? One of the approaches that Play Africa has always embraced is this idea of design thinking or human-centered design. So every program that we've developed uh, over the course of several years really ensures that we put the user at the heart of our design process. And in this case, the user is an ECD practitioner who oftentimes is sitting in a low resource setting, facing various constraints, various challenges, and um, is doing incredible work oftentimes without a lot of support, monetary or otherwise. So when we created this resource, we went out into communities and through one-on-one interviews with our play and learning facilitators and practitioners from their own communities, we were able to get feedback about what they were looking for. And again and again, we found that educators wanted to be able to do this kind of playful learning in their classroom, but didn't really know where to start. And we're looking for practical, easy to implement tips and resources of how to do that. And specifically, we knew that a lot of educators had seen pictures of fancy ECD centers that have a lot of very high-end materials. And what we had heard from them is that they felt like that was unattainable for the, practically for their organization, for their ECD center. It's just out of their reach. So what we wanted to, we really heard from them is that we celebrated the incredible work that they're already doing. And we wanted to give them very step-by-step ways to use everyday materials to introduce key concepts in STEM to their children. And that could be done with recyclable materials and others. So this particular resource is aimed at speaking directly to those ECD practitioners, not only in the communities directly that we interviewed in and around Johannesburg and Soweto, but really across the country in rural areas and other communities across the country. And really broadly speaking across the continent who are facing incredible resource constraints, but have a commitment to child-led playful learning. Here we show the educators, what what do we say when we talk about a playful educator, a resourceful creative educator who brings play into interactions and helps uh, increase the quality of stimulation and enrichment in the classroom by introducing playful methodologies. We also show those educators how to set up STEM centers in your classroom. So that means going around the classroom and saying, can we create a science uh, center where children are able to observe, investigate uh, and and test and experiment, doing this themselves in ways by providing very, very easy to access recycled and other materials. So we're trying to show that we don't, you don't need fancy materials to do STEM and you don't need fancy materials to teach STEM. When we talk about things like technology, we're not talking about computer screens and tablets and iPads. That is not at all the kind of computational thinking we need to teach children today at this age. We need to teach patterns and sequences and how to recognize um, uh, simple concepts around ordering and how you would execute a program. I don't know if you know this, but you can teach coding using anything. You can teach it using cut up pictures from a magazine. You can teach coding using stones. So really there is no barrier um, to accessing the kind of high level um, quality at early childhood development. And we wanted to be that bridge to help educators feel confident and inspired to try this in their own classrooms. And we hope that by doing so with a 
tremendous respect for who they are and what they're doing day in and day out, they'll see that this resource truly is for them and that they can try to start implementing these things immediately. So uh, Gretchen, I didn't know that I can learn coding with stones or piece of paper. Thanks for, for sharing that. Uh, if anybody wants to find out more about the uh, program, more about Play Africa, where can they go? They can certainly come to us at playafrica.org.za. Um, we have resources there. Uh, if you want it specifically the STEM Seeds resource, it would be playafrica.org.za slash STEM Seeds slash. And that is where you can download this free resource. It's 114 pages that is chock-a-block with um, exciting and fun and playful ways to introduce STEM concepts and climate change awareness in your own classroom. It is um, not intimidating. It's designed exactly for the South African ECD practitioner in a low resource setting who simply wants to know with what I have around me, how can I build, how can I prepare children for a changing world? And how can I be that first teacher that helps them see that all of these fields are open to them and that they can build the creativity, the confidence, and the collaboration and communication to be able to thrive so that they're ready for school and they're ready to succeed in a world that is rapidly changing. Gretchen, thank you very much for your time. Thank you so much. It's been a pleasure to be here. Nice to talk to you. Okay, so that's the CEO of Play Africa, Gretchen Wilson Prangley, talking to us about um, the work that our organization is doing, and then an amazing resource called STEM Seeds that you'll be able to download. <laughs> no worries. Okay, cool. I'll do a pickup. Thanks, Gretchen. Thank you so much. I'm sorry for the technology hiccup there. I really apologize. Uh, don't worry. No worries about it. it Silence on my phone. This will be up next week, so I will send a link to your PR agency. Thank you so much. Is there anything else that I, like, is there anything else helpful that I can do that you want me to do over again for any reason? No, I think you are absolutely eloquent. Uh, the only thing I'm going to need, which uh, I think uh, Sam has already sent me, I just need a lot of images, if you've got any video, um, just so that as you talk, we can use it as overlay and that kind of stuff. Got it. Okay. Uh, if it's going to go next week, we're going to have, do you know, uh, Tina Mshope? She's the iconic South African yes. storyteller. She's yeah. going to be doing a story that's going to be at our launch event on Friday. And so I can ask um, Sam and Rachel to make sure that you get a copy of that in case you want to see something. She's going to be speaking about the natural world. Again, one of the things I just want to emphasize is, you know, the world all around us has so much to offer in terms of yeah. teaching STEM. So we can become thinkers and uh, experimenters and investigators simply in, an, in our natural world. So you can be in the middle of a remote rural area. And if you have the, the tools and the confidence and the instruction and the encouragement to investigate, you can do so without any man-made resources and become a scientist in the future. Welcome back to The Social Network. Our Game Changer feature focuses on individuals, organizations that create projects and programs which have real impact in communities. We spoke to the founder of Enzo Dance Academy. The vision behind the academy is to teach kids from poorer neighborhoods how to dance while picking up important life skills. Founder and chief choreographer Enzo tells us more about how it all started. is quite incredible and it can change any human being spiritually. My organization started um, 2018 and I have a life coach who, and, and my cousin which they, 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 they put me down and because they saw me dance a lot and they really loved what I did so they, they thought what would it be if I started from from the ground and just lift up young kids, um, teenagers and, and adults because um, dancing, dancing is quite incredible and it can change any human being, you know what I mean, spiritually. 
So when you dance, you become a different being. You feel the beat. You 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 go on an emotional space. And the Dance Academy is, is, is a very awesome school for little kids from daycares, which they love dancing. And that is my why. Dance is my why. The little kids, they're also my why. My team, they're also my why. The need that, that I saw in the community, um, a lot of kids are smoking drugs. They, 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 they're doing all these awful things. So my impact was to change the whole environment. And changing the whole environment, um, um, I was willing to change it through dance. The vision forward about it is to go national and international. Meaning, um, I would really love me and my team to teach our own dance to other countries. Like individually, just give them what we have and share the whole dance with, with everyone. You can go straight to Google and just search Enzo Dance Academy. Or they can also follow me on Facebook, which is Enzo. Tatohati, Instagram, Enzo Tatohati, Twitter, Enzo Tatohati. And my page is also on, on Facebook, Enzo Dance Academy. Unfortunately, we have reached the end of our show. For more CSI news, don't forget to visit www.socialtv.co.za. From me, Amanda Mkize, till next time.